Hi, we're now going to start trying to do video diaries uh, to go with our blog pages. Today we're down in the Lowther Hills, it's a beautiful day in February, a surprisingly warm day, and we're in the village of Dewisdeer, this is Dewisdeer Church behind me, built in 1699. We're going to visit the church later on in the day, but first of all, we're going to show you one of the great secrets that Dewisdeer has. I don't know if you can actually read the sign, but that's the secret, that's what we're taking you to today, Dewisdeer Roman Fort. Now, a lot of folk, when they think of Romans in Scotland, they probably think of Hadrian's Wall. And that's a mistake, because Hadrian's Wall isn't actually in Scotland, and it's not even on the Scottish border, not the current Scottish border, anyway. Um, the other thing that they might think of is Antonine's Wall. And, you know, Antonine's Wall's okay, but it's in the middle of Scotland, it's on the central belt, so... Pretty much every place you go on Antonine's Wall, you're quite close to a busy town or a busy road. It's hard to get a real sense of time stood still. Here, going up to that hill up there, at Dewisdeer in the Lowther Hills, north of um, Dumfries, you find a real sense of tranquility, a real sense of time stood still. And we're going to walk up to the fort using the old Roman access road that uh, used to connect Nisdale down there with the Clyde Valley up there. It's one of the best preserved forts in Scotland. It's, it's a bit of a secret. It's probably certainly as good as anything you'll find on Antonine's wall. Um, but we'll show you more when we get there. As I walk up this uh, hill, up this, this Roman road, I'll try and give you an appreciation of the Roman road. If I pan round, you can just kind of make out how it goes up the hill and veers round up to the fort. There's two things that are going through my head. One is, I'm getting too old for this kind of hiking. And the other one is, if I was a Roman soldier, 20, 40 miles behind enemy lines, this would be a really scary place to come to because I'm going to a fort and I'm going all around me, up high in the hills. All around me are probably lots of really angry pigs, painted blue, wanting to kick my ass. And I don't think any help would come very quickly when I'm stuck here. So uh, I think this would be quite a scary and unpopular outpost to have in the Roman army. Certainly not as good as being in the south of France. Whew. Right, we're nearly at the fort. Okay, here we are at the fort. I made it. Didn't have a heart attack. This is the outer ditch, as you can see, quite a substantial outer ditch. And then earthworks that rise up to the inner fort. Now, they did archaeological digs here in the, I think it was in the 1920s, late 20s. And they discovered evidence of uh, two wooden garrison blocks, about 80 foot long. And they concluded that it was probably a fort for mounted Roman cavalry. I'm not quite sure how they came to that conclusion. I guess it's got something to do with the distance between this fort and the next one, um, and the amount of time it would take to ride between the two so they could give mutual support in the event of attack. So we've got this outer ditch, as you can see, well preserved. In that earthworks, ditch carrying around on the other side, and then the entranceway into home sweet home or whatever the Latin for home sweet home is. So let me just scan around. This particular fort was probably built round about um, 100 AD, uh, around about the same time perhaps as Antonine's Wall was being constructed further in the north. As I say, it was a guarding post for this, this pass. We've got Nisdale down there, and then you come through here, it's called the Well Path. We go through the hills here, it takes a very direct route, which connects you through to the Clyde Valley. And the modern day road, the A702, which then takes you through to Edinburgh. Um, there's not really much more I can tell you about it. It's uh, it's just what Roman forts are like in Scotland. They are just grassy mounds, and um, I'm sorry if we disappointed you, 
but this is actually as good as it gets. So I've, I've walked further up the hill to give you a better perspective of the the ruins of this old Roman fort. It gives you a, a good understanding of its strategic position in the valley, guarding the, the Roman road that would give access east-west through the Lowther Hills. Obviously quite a lonely outpost and quite a daunting one given that the enemy, the Picts, well, not my enemy, possibly my friends, but given that the picks would have held all the high ground either side of you this could have felt like quite an exposed position to be stationed but there are substantial earthworks there that would certainly slow down anyone trying to attack you and it's most likely that this fort would have had a wooden wall, a wooden balisade round about and probably all sorts of spikes and various other nasty things to keep attacking blue-faced people at bay and whilst it might not look all that much to you, this is really one of the best preserved Roman forts that you'll find anywhere in Scotland. So that's us completed our walk to the Roman fort and we're back at Jurisdeer and the church which I promised to tell you more about at the beginning. Now the outstanding feature of this kirk, the thing that makes it notable, is something called the Queensbury Marbles. That is actually a mausoleum for the second Duke of Queensbury. He's a kind of controversial character in Scottish history. He's also known as the Union Duke and he's one of the men that the poet Rabbi Burns described as the parcel of rogues. He is called this because he's one of the men who were involved in the Act of Union, the, the unification of the Scottish Parliament into Westminster Parliament in 1707. He's controversial because the majority of Scots didn't want this to happen. It was a decision that was taken by some very wealthy lords and dukes who were bribed, a lot of them were bribed by the English government to form a union, a political union between Scotland and England and sign away Scottish independence. Now, what gets more interesting about the duke, we're walking actually at the moment, it's the second door on the right, this door that I'm pointing to, and I'll take you inside in a moment. The Duke's also got some other interesting stories about him. His castle is nearby, it's Drumlanrig Castle. Um, the Duke, for his part in creating the Act of Union and signing off Scottish independence, received an annual pension of £3,000 a year, which would have been a lot of money back in 1707. He himself didn't live very long to enjoy that. He died in 1711 down in London and uh, some kind of complication with his intestines, I believe. Some maybe overeating, spending his £3,000 a year, I don't know. And his son was, um, by all accounts, insane and also very violent, psychopathic, we might even describe him nowadays. And he lived all his life in a locked room in a house in Edinburgh, Queensbury House in Edinburgh, which still exists and is now actually part of the new Scottish Parliament buildings. Now, when the Act of Union was declared in 1707. There were riots on the streets of Edinburgh because the people of Scotland did not want this, this unification of Scotland into the UK as it was to become. They wanted Scottish independence to retain, they wanted Scotland to maintain its right to self-determination. So there were riots on the streets and during these riots the Duke's son, who was known as the Earl of John Lanrig, he managed to escape from his confinement and he killed one of the kitchen staff, a young boy. Not only did he kill this young boy, but he also apparently roasted him and then was found eating the child. So many folks said that this was punishment on the second Duke of Queensbury, the Union Duke, punishment for his role in signing off Scottish independence. Um, anyway, it didn't work out well for him in the end. And it didn't work out terribly well for Scotland either, but we'll now walk and take you into the mausoleum.
what do you think of Judas Deer so far? Good. <laughs> what?